Jacob Zuma will be responding to the questions of MPs in the National Assembly this afternoon. As the debate session wraps, we speak to two young and up-and-coming members of Parliament. Uh, you, you know their faces, I'm sure, but let's introduce them to you. Nkabayomzi Kwankwa, he is the chief whip of the United Democratic Movement. And Nkuleko Hlengwa, he uh, he's been an MP since 2012. Both gentlemen are joining us from our parliamentary studios in Cape Time. Guys, good to have you on the program. Welcome to Morning Live. Good morning, Leanne, and thank you very much for having us, and good morning to the viewers at home. Yeah, absolute pleasure. Thanks so much. So, in some of these instances, I have to say, I mean, just from watching from a distance, and I think it's, it's, a, it's very much the so opinion of many South Africans, you guys have come out as, as the voice of reason, and you're probably some of the youngest individuals in Parliament, um, especially seeing what's playing out in politics at the moment. What do you think? What, what are your views? Let's, I mean, we've got, we've got a shot on you, um, uh, Nkaba Yomzi. What, what is your, your view on all of this? Well, I, I once said on behalf of the UGM a while ago, I think two years ago, in fact, that the challenge facing us now is that we have a group of political leaders that deals with our nation's challenges, less according to national interests and more according to vote maximization and narrow partisan interests, and mostly according to the primitive doctrine that might is right. We are going to have to try and address that as leaders if we are to take the nation forward. For example, democracy is supposed to produce political accountability. It is supposed to ensure that we, the political leaders, become responsive to the needs of our people. But the people are angry with us primarily because they feel that the instruments and the institutions of democracy will have allowed them to be used for contrarian aims or to either settle personal and political scores and that we're not dealing meaningfully with their challenges. It means that what we must do then as leaders is we need to find ourselves again, find each other, try to find common ground on some of the issues we disagree on, try to dialogue around issues that might, uh, might cause political differences, some of the issues that are uh, of political importance to various political parties. We could do, for instance, that in parliament as leaders, that, but it also needs to happen outside of parliament. Uh, because remember, Parliament is rules, but uh, in order for one to be able to find each other at a political level, you need an engagement at political leadership level, for instance. Yeah. Uh, so that most of what gets processed in Parliament, what we do in Parliament and outside Parliament, even at provincial and local government level, is managed at a level that is political and higher. All right. Mkulego, let's bring you into the conversation here. Um, if, if I'm not mistaken, you're not, you're not even 30 years old yet. Uh, is, is that correct? Uh, that's correct. I'm okay. 30 in June. All right. Well, I mean, you, you, you're sitting there, you're watching a lot of your elders behaving in the manner that they do. And uh, I, I'd love to get it from your perspective. How do you feel sitting there watching some of these events unfolding? Uh, do you think it's democracy at play or do you think that this is not the way things should be handled? I think in the context that you've got unemployment at 27.2 percent and the expanded rate at 35 percent or so which means you've got nine million people effectively who are unemployed who in the main are young people it is quite depressing that we are not seized with the nitty gritties of the problem so that you can be able to sort that out I, and i think what happened last week in the main um, at sona whilst the points that were raised are valid and the continued occupation of office by President Zuma is questionable against the backdrop of the Constitutional Court judgment. But I do not think that the manner in which matters are being raised inspires confidence for young people mm -hmm. who are living a life of struggle on a daily basis because these struggles are across the board, whether it's those in employment or those who are in institutions of higher learning or in education or it's people who actually just are desperate for an economy that is going to grow and the economy that's going to um, develop. So it is quite concerning that we are on a slippery slope and we're quite frankly at a crossroads um, as a country. And I think we need to take decisive steps in terms of how we deal with the political engagement um, in, 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 in Parliament. I do not think that all views are incorrect but I do not think that at the same time we can set into motion a precedence of disruption. Mm. Because for all intents and purposes, and rightly or wrongly, President Zuma remains the president. 
we all are, have got our reservations and we are all pro the constitution. Um, and it is now in the ANC's um, court, the ball is in the ANC's court, that they must do with the president because parliament has effectively exhausted all available avenues of removing the president. So I think it's the responsibility now goes back to the ANC for us to rescue us from this impasse because yeah. they know as well as South Africa knows that the president is no longer fit for purpose and fit for office against the, of the constitutional court uh, uh, judgment. But at the same time, we cannot then negate the issues. The issues still need to be engaged and concrete steps need to be taken to resolve um, the problems confronting young people. So that's why one feels a heavy weight of discomfort mm -hmm. because we are becoming more rhetorical in, 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 in what we do and less focused on action steps and practical implementation yeah, yeah. Um, of, of what needs to happen. I mean, we've got, we've got the, the question and answer session that's going to be happening. The president is once again going to be in parliament today. Um, we have obviously heard the EFF are not going to be present there. Um, but, but do you think it's going to be productive or do you think it's going to once again turn into a mudslinging match with the president and nothing fruitful is going to come of it? Or do you think that perhaps we can be, you know, a little bit more grown up and, and, and get to the bottom of what is affecting South Africans' lives? The challenge that I just, I really believe that the ANC and the EFF need to sit down and have a heart to heart about how they are interacting with one another and actually rescue us from the situation. And I think the DA as well needs to come in because yesterday, for an example, all of us were drawn, whilst the debate was going on, we were drawn into the ANC DA tit for tat. Yeah. The debate, as far as we are concerned, was not productive um, and became more about personal attacks. It became more about who can scream the loudest. And of course, the Presiding officers don't assist the situation with the inconsistent application of the rules. And so in retaliation, then political parties want to um, match up to the, that kind of, uh, uh, you know, rhetoric. So I really think we need a moment of reflection as Parliament and as South Africa and ask ourselves whether we are conducting ourselves in a manner in which the people expect of us. I'm inclined to believe that South Africans no longer appreciate the chaos which is in Parliament. And if that's the case, it means Parliament no longer enjoys um, the support and the legitimacy which is expected of it, of the electorate. And that is problematic for a democratic country if Parliament is now at a standoff with its citizenry and the electorate. So this nonsense just needs to stop. Okay. We need to grow up and get back to the basics of service delivery and engaging on issues. All right, I'm, I'm stealing 30 seconds from the news in Kabayomzi because you know, I feel that you need to respond to this as well. I mean, the, the sense that I'm getting is this is turning into personal attacks between the EFF, the DA, the ANC, the, 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 the leading opposition parties and the ruling party need to come together and make up. I mean, is, is this how you feel? You sit there in Parliament and it's more of a personal thing than it is anything else. You know what is, has been going on in Parliament for quite some time now is, uh, is unadulterated claptrap. I mean, if you look at it, President Zuma is still the president of the country on the basis of the very same constitution. I mean, we tried to use Section 89 of the constitution, which is impeachment, to remove him. We tried to use Section 102 of the constitution, which is the vote of no confidence in the president, and they, both initiatives, which are in terms of the constitution of the republic, failed. Now, if the ANC does not want to remove its candidate that it has put forward as a president, that can then not be the problem or up to us to remove him. It's up to the African National Congress. And ultimately, it's the voters themselves who must decide as to what they want to do or what kind of leader they would like to have in 2019. We must give it to the voters in 2019. But at the same time, we could have a broader and a bigger debate to say, how do we amend our electoral laws to make sure that South Africans can indeed at some point uh, elect a president directly instead of them being given a candidate by a political party, because that brings us all manner of problems. The other issue, obviously, that we should be having in trying to take this debate forward is to say what kind of amendments to both to the constitutions and other relevant legislations when it comes to the power of the president, because clearly over the years they have been abused. I think what happened is that when we made the constitution in particular, especially the powers of the executive and the president, we did it for president, former president Nelson Mandela, so we legislated for good times. Yeah. We never, we lacked the foresight to see that we might have someone like President Zuma 
who might abuse that power. So we need to go back to the drawing board. But in so far as what is happening between opposition parties and political parties in general, it's actually very, very bad for our country. It, 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 it sets a very bad tone even for engagement when it comes to public discourse among ordinary citizens. Okay. We are failing to lead our people properly currently, and we need yeah. to rise up, uh, rise to the occasion and make sure that we do things right. All right. Gentlemen, thank you for uh, talking to us here on the program. Good luck for this afternoon. Of course, you know the President is in uh, Parliament this afternoon doing a QA. and I know we've broken into news time, but I think that is one of our top stories that we're going to be looking at. So, um, uh, Unkuleko Tlengwa, the Member of Parliament with the IFP, thanks for joining us. And uh, somebody who's now... Absolutely. Uh, great. And someone who's been taken up as the position of the People's Bay. Well done on that position. <laughs> <laughs> and Gabriel Yomzi Kwankwa, our chief whip of the UDM. I sense a blush there. Uh, thanks so much for joining us here on the program as well. All right.